the meeting. I know we've done quite a few of these now linked to the Senate Determined Grades. And it's just another update really to give you more of a timeline of, of events really. And I know the pupils, myself and Mr Longdon met with them on Tuesday last week to um, discuss the timeline of, of events really moving forward to now and, up to, and over past Easter really. Um, and also say brilliant it was today to see all the pupils in school. Um, obviously, you know, the, the lessons I taught, it was great to see them and really to see them back and back in the classroom really. So that was a really um, good start really to the week. So just to recap um, where we are really with the Centre Determined Grades, and I know a lot of you would have seen this already from myself and from letters and obviously things in the press, etc. But the grade is awarded by the school is based on the evidence that's been produced by, by the pupil, OK? Um, the evidence or the themes are outlined in the qualification assessment frameworks and the idea that the grade is a, is a best is there a hand up? Sorry, if there's any hands, if you get questions towards the end would, would be fantastic. But is there is there a hand up now that Mr Longdon can see the screen? Sorry, sir, there was a hand up from, I think it was Judith Thomas. But I think it's gone down now, so maybe. Okay. Sorry, to, to, if, I think it's because I can't see the screen if there's questions. So maybe if I just go through the presentation and then we'll have some questions maybe at the end, then I think would be would be the best. So I can take, I can unshare as well. Just to be clear as well, that this is being recorded for parents who couldn't make the meeting. So you can always rewatch this because the link will be sent out to, to parents as well. OK, so the expectation is as well from the school that we have sort of clear and robust quality assurance processes in place. And that's a, a subject level and as a whole school level. So that's ensure that the system is fair and, and clear really for everybody. And that comes into the conversations you know we're having this evening and making sure you're informed on the process as well. Just to be clear what the grades are not, you know, they're not a grade to show potential or based on a teacher prediction. You know, they need to be based on the evidence that is in front of, of the of the teachers really when they're awarding the grade. And you know, they're not similar to last year's centre assess grades, although they sound similar, you know, there's no external standardization and there is no ranking system which was in place last year. So last year when the grades were given, there was a sort of formula that they used to give the grade. That isn't happening this year. Once the grade are awarded, that will be the grade um, that is given as it stands, barring any review process. OK, so if we just look at the timeline now on the screen, this letter on the left hand side was sent home to the pupils on Tuesday. So it was a letter for the learners and, and to ensure that we didn't just send the letter home as a school. Myself, Mr Longdon and Mrs Oliver went through the letter with the learners in year 10, year 11 and in the sixth form in years 12 and 13. And as you can see on the right hand side there, we sort of got the, the Pontypridd High School pupil timeline. So, you know, by April, the pupils will know exactly how they're going to be assessed and when those assessments are. And I'll talk more about those assessments later on um, in each subject. In May, and hopefully in the sort of first two weeks of May, the pupils will receive another school report. So that would be their third school report for this year. Again, that should give them a very clear idea of where they're working to. You know, that isn't their centre determined grade because obviously that's not going to be awarded until June, but it does tell them where they're working towards at that current time. And obviously if they keep working in that manner, that's where they should end up. But that, it's another piece of information really to show how well the pupils are performing in each subject and the sort of attitudes to learn in each subject as well. Then, which is new sort of in the legislation, um, in the week commencing the 21st of June, pupils will receive their provisional, and the reason it's provisional, because it, you know, the real uh, grades get awarded in, in August, their provisional sent to determine grade. So that's the week beginning 21st of June. And then after that, they have an opportunity to review their grades. So they should know where they're working and they should, you know, and, and you should be aware of what the pupils are on for in terms of their from, from their reports. But they have an opportunity to review their grade, to ask the school to review it. So if they weren't happy with their grade, they thought the evidence suggested they, they should have had a higher grade. They have an opportunity to ask the school to change the grade and the school would have to respond to that review process. The deadline we've set for that is the 30th of June for all reviews would need to be sent in before then. And then the grade would either change or stay the same, and that would be just an internal review with the school. 
those results then would be submitted then by the 2nd of July to the WJC. And then GCSE results day would be on the 12th of August. Now, if you were still unhappy with the grade, and I'm, you know, I'm making this quite clear really, um, you would then have an opportunity to appeal to the WJC regarding the result of the grade. But, you know, I don't envisage hopefully there being any appeals, but obviously that is the process that's in place by the WJC and, you know, that's the Welsh Government's process they put in place. OK, so there's two options there. The first one is an internal appeal after the provisional grades and the second one would be after the GCSE results day. But as I said, you know, the most important thing is the pupils get the grade that they deserve based on the work that they put in. And, you know, I don't envisage there being large numbers of appeals moving forward with the process, really. OK, so I'm now going to talk to you really, we, and if there's any questions on this timeline, we can come back to it at the end. I'm going to talk to you about how the centre determined grades will be awarded and the process really within that. And how it works. So for each qualification, there'll be three sort of tiers of evidence. So modified past papers. So this week or today, actually, the WJC has released the modified past paper questions for each subject. Now, not all subjects will have modified past paper questions because they don't have that isn't part of the evidence that would be used. For instance, art, it would just be based on B, which is the NEA. OK, so the second tier of evidence, and I'll go through each one of these in detail after this slide, is the NEA. So that's like your coursework, basically. So your non-examination assessment. So where applicable, that would form another part of the evidence. Where not applicable, you just wouldn't have that. And then C is other other assessed work that have been taken from sort of past paper materials or other areas of work that, are, that could be used. So other types of essay questions, maybe in English, are linked to past papers. OK, so what they mean then is you will have a best fit grade based on all the evidence there. So you've got your adapted past paper questions in the majority of subjects and the timeline for them and when they are going to be occurring will be issued before Easter. The NEAs, they're ongoing and they're still happening. And I'll talk about all of these in more detail. And thirdly, any other assessed work. So assessments they've completed already, mock exams, year 11 would have completed before Christmas. They would all be under C, other assessed work, which could be taken from, you know, past papers, etc. that they've completed already. OK. Adapted past papers, these have been handed out uh, today on the WJC website. And, you know, they follow the key skills and themes which you need to be which link to the grade descriptors at each grade in the each qualification. So, for instance, mathematics, algebra, geometry, stats, etc. The volume of evidence within each subject will vary because not all subjects have an adapted past paper and not all subjects have an NEA. So it would be varied between the, the subjects as well. And all of this will form part of the, the evidence in our whole school sent to determine grade policy, which will be available as well, but has to be submitted to the WJC before Easter. On-site gathering evidence for the past papers will take place in the summer terms. So that will take place after Easter, and we are working on the assessment plan for this and the assessment calendar for these adapted past papers, and that will be published to the pupils and yourselves before Easter. I want to be very clear on the next point. These are not mock exams. They're not exams. These are, um, they will be under similar controls to non exam you know, NEAs. But the, the key point is, it might take three lessons to complete these um, assessments. You know, they're not going to be done in a two hour sitting, like a mock exam in a hall or in a classroom. These will be assessments where the pupils will be, you know, they will know and be prepared for these assessments to the best of their ability so they can show how well they can do. And that's the most important thing about these assessments. Okay. And as I said, not in every subject. And just to reiterate, they are not mock exams. They are assessed to show the evidence of a certain grade in each subject. Then the NEAs, that are the second tier of evidence. They exist in many qualifications. And the current deadlines and restrictions around NEA have been removed. So if they have to complete the NEA by May, that's no longer the case. The, the subject can manage when the NEA is completed. The weighting will need to be considered. For instance, when you complete an NEA in a certain subject, 
it might only be worth 20%, and then the formal exam is worth 80%. Uh, but obviously that weighting is slightly changed now. So when when given the determining the overall grade, it will need to be considered the weighting given to the NEA, and that would be done with, at a subject level to ensure consistency. And then the other contributing evidence, that would be from previous assessments, previous mock exams, and you couldn't solely base the grade on this because, you know, as it says here on point B, the pupils weren't aware when they were sitting those mock exams and assessments that their grade would be solely based on, on this mock exam or this assessment. So you couldn't solely base a judgment on that, but they can confirm a judgment because the students, you know, have done that work previously. And if they're working at a B grade then and they're working at a B grade now, that can only confirm the evidence for that pupil. OK, so there's the three tiers of evidence. And if you look at it like that, really, there you've got your adapted past papers, your NEA assessment and your other contributing evidence. And as I stated earlier, you know, we're currently writing the set of determined grade policy, which will be available um, to yourselves going through sort of process at the moment. And, you know, part of that is ensuring there's a school, not just at a subject level, but as a whole school level. You know, we have rigorous quality assurance processes in place and that ensures that the whole process is fair and you know reliability throughout the process and ensuring that it's moderated across all subjects. And an output of that then is the centre determined grade. And you know to summarise as a school we will ensure the evidence is accurate, is solely evidence based on, on the evidence in front of you know, the teachers when they're deciding the grades and it you know a, the school must support grade distribution across the whole school. Key information, we will keep having these meetings to make sure you're fully informed with the whole process. And as a school, we will ensure, you know, reliability for, and fairness for all pupils throughout the whole process. So the next stage in this now, when, when we, we meet next or when you have communication home, will be the assessment plan from the timeline. And you will have an idea of when the assessments are taking place for the pupils and what subjects their assessments in and then the pupils will be building towards them after easter and that is the main um point really from from this evening now i know there was a few questions so if i unshare i can i can take those questions now